I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School and we're going to talk about microbes. So microbes would include bacteria, viruses, um, fungus, and also protists. So we'll be talking about each one of those in turn. We're going to start off by talking about bacteria. And bacteria are very numerous. They've been found in every environment on Earth. So they're very prolific, which means they reproduce a lot. And so bacteria are prokaryotes, and every prokaryote cell is bacteria. Um, bacteria are unicellular, so they're only one-celled organisms. And there's two different um, bacteria kingdoms. So there's the eubacteria, and then there's archaeobacteria, which is the archaic um, bacteria. So we're going to talk quite a bit about the cell structure of bacteria and what it looks like so that you will be able to um, look at a cell and immediately know that it's a bacteria cell rather than a eukaryote cell. Now, so I'm going to go through some of these structures and point them out to you. The flagella is used for movement, so that's this long tail or whip-like um, structure right here, and the bacteria use that to move around. But they also have pili, so these are pili right here. And these are not necessarily for movement, but they're more to help the bacteria cling to the surface that they're on. So prokaryotes, or bacteria, they do not have any organelles inside. So when you look in here, you're not going to see um, a Golgi apparatus. You're not going to see a nucleus. You're not going to see the endoplasmic reticulum, those things that you learned about when we were studying eukaryote cells. They don't have those things. What they do have is they have a nucleoid region, and it's just um, a, sing a circular loop of DNA. So this right here, all this squiggly stuff in here, that's just DNA. There's no nucleus. It's just in there. Okay, and then there's also plasmids, and those are rings of DNA that are used in reproduction. So this picture doesn't really show any plasmids in here. And then it does have ribosomes. So you see these little dots right there? Those are ribosomes, and they do the same thing as what eukaryote cells do. They produce the proteins. Now, the bacteria has a cell membrane, and it regulates what comes in and out of the cell, just like um, you would see in a eukaryote cell. So it has the cell membrane, but it also has a cell wall, okay? Not necessarily the same kind of cell wall like plants have, but it does have the cell wall, and that helps it maintain the shape and the form of the cell. And then what we also see is we see a capsule. So it has another layer around it, and that capsule is really important to, um, to bacteria that make us sick because the capsule is what helps it evade our immune system. All right, so reproduction in prokaryotes is a little bit different than um, reproduction in eukaryote cells. So bacteria reproduce by binary fission, so that really is just the splitting of the cell into two daughter cells. And it's asexual reproduction. So those two daughter cells are going to be exactly alike. But there's some other methods of reproduction in bacteria. So the first one is bacterial transformation. So what happens here is um, the bacteria, they'll, there might be um, a mutation in the DNA of the bacteria, and then that DNA is released and it's taken up by a recipient cell. So it just goes basically from one of the cells to another one, and that changes the genetics. Then the um, second one, or B, shown in this picture, is bacterial transduction. And what happens here is um, there's a phage, which is really just a, a virus that has infected the bacteria cell, and it has gone into the cell and picked up some of the DNA, and then it's released from the cell. And when it goes and infects another cell, it leaves some of that DNA in the other cell. 
And then there's bacterial conjugation. And what happens here is the two cells get very close to each other. Their cell membrane fuses. And then um, part of the DNA can move from the donor cell into the recipient cell. So there are different types of bacteria. And autotrophic prokaryotes, they make their own food using photosynthesis. So these are bacteria that use photosynthesis to make their own food. Heterotrophic prokaryotes would be bacteria that absorb other organisms for energy. We, we see these when we have a bacterial infection and that bacteria is actually using our nutrients to keep itself going. And so like this is a flesh eating bacteria right here and so this bacteria is actually absorbing this person's skin or flesh in order to make energy for itself. And then there's also chemo, uh, chemoautotrophic prokaryotes and they make their energy from using molecules that are in the environment. So we have bacterial diseases. Um, microbes that cause disease are called pathogens. So pathogens, they produce a toxin um, and they are harmful to whatever organism that they're on. So pathogens don't just affect humans, they affect animals and sometimes even plants. All right, we have a couple of different ways to identify bacteria. The Gram stain procedure was developed by Hans Christian Gram in the late 1880s, and this shows us the differences in bacteria. So a lot of times when we're trying to identify a bacteria, we will do this Gram stain procedure. And Gram positive would be purple, and Gram negative would be pink. And if it's Gram negative, we know we have a problem because that type of bacteria it resists antibiotics. It's not as easily killed by antibiotics. So we have um, some naming systems that we use for the basic shapes of bacteria. So we have coxae, which are spheres. They're the round bacteria. We have bacilli, which are the rods. And we have spirilla, which are the spiral shaped. Now, if we put staph in the word, when we're naming it, that means it's in clusters. And staph is actually a Greek word that means grapes. And so staph would show clusters of bacteria. And then we also use the word strep, and that means that they're in chains and they're basically linked together one after the other. So here's an example of that, streptococcus. This is responsible for strep throat and um, flesh eating bacteria. And you'll notice that these are, um, they have the little round shape, so that's the coxie, and then the strep means that they're in long chains, and you'll see that these are in chains, just one right after the other. And then Staphylococcus aureus, this is um, a coxie, but you'll notice that it's in these groups. It's not in long chains, it's in these groups clusters, and so we put staph in front of that word. Another type of bacteria is Clostridium botulism, and this is in a rod shape, as you can see from the picture, but botulism is food poisoning, and so um, we see this a lot in cans that get dented. If, there, if a little hole is in the canned food, and then air can get in there, botulism will form inside of that can, and that's a type of food poisoning. Um, the same bacteria is what is used um, when women get Botox injections. Here's a E. coli picture, and E. coli is a rod, and you can see a very well-defined um, flagellum there. And E. coli actually is in our gut. It helps us to digest um, Food, and so it's actually very important for us to have in our digestive system. It provides us with vitamin A, um, but E. coli can also be very um, destructive if, it's, if we ingest it. So a lot of times we'll have E. coli outbreaks in, in hamburgers, and it's because they're not cooked well enough. So um, 
One way to avoid an E. coli outbreak is to make sure that hamburgers have been cooked all the way through. And then there's spirilla bacteria. And so these are just long spiral shaped bacteria cells. And here's a picture of salmonella, which is, um, which is also a bacteria that can cause food poisoning. And you'll see that it's rod shaped. Salmonella is actually a very common bacteria on reptiles, which is why we always have to wash our hands after we handle any type of reptile.